This is a video about camera gear. Now I, like a lot of you, suffer from gear acquisition syndrome, aka gas, so I tend to buy a lot of crap. You don't necessarily need all this stuff, but this is what I use to shoot wedding films, small corporate gigs, real estate stuff, and of course, YouTube videos as well. Now we're not gonna make this long and drawn out, it's gonna be quick and to the point. Here's the piece of gear, this is why I like it or what I use it for, and that'll be it. Right, let's do it. In terms of cameras, I use the Sony a7 III. I love it because it's a fantastic hybrid camera for both photo and video. I can quickly swap between modes. It's been my go-to since it came out like March 2018. It is gonna be my B cam soon when the a7S III comes. I also am currently using the EOS R as like a thumbnails camera, as a behind the scenes camera, and just for a general B camera. But I think that's gonna get sold and I'm gonna buy another Sony camera. In terms of lenses, I use the Sony 16 to 35 F4. I recently just rebought this. I tried a bunch of other ones and I just couldn't get this one out of my head. It's got a certain look to it at 16. It's just fantastic, incredibly sharp. I use this for a lot of real estate stuff, anything I need super wide landscape shots, that kind of thing, if you want to vlog. Also, the fact that it has OSS built in is pretty decent. The 24mm f1.4 G Master, my favorite lens. If I could use one lens for the rest of my life, it would be this, incredibly sharp. Even if you're shooting in 1080p, sometimes it looks as crispy as 4K. Really, you can use this lens for anything you want. You can pop it into crop mode, get the equivalent of like a 36. Pretty much anything and everything you wanna shoot with the 24, you can. My next favorite lens is the 55mm f1.8, which is my go-to for shooting events, anything when it comes to an interview, corporate gigs. It just has a really nice look to it. It's incredibly sharp. The autofocus is a little bit slower, albeit accurate. It is an older lens, still a fantastic choice. A great overall all-round lens, 55mm, you can use for everything as long as it's not a small tight environment. I still own the 85mm f1.8 from Sony which is a fantastic lens however I've recently been shooting more with the Sony 90mm f2.8 macro lens. There's something about that lens that just has a very dreamy straight out of the camera beautiful look to it. For portraits it's fantastic, for close-up detail shots at weddings, for events, anything macro related you want to shoot there's something about that that I really like and the clutch on it, fantastic for if you need to jump into manual focus. Next lens I use is the Sony 70-200 f4. It's one of those lenses that you don't really wanna to have to buy but then you buy it and then for any form of event, it's fantastic. You can stand back, zoom right in, get even further with crop mode and it's a staple if you shoot any form of event. The compression is beautiful, just the lens you need in your bag. In terms of ND filters, there's only one that I use, the Pumvund, which is the Peter McKinnon variable ND filter. I use the 77 mil version. Always get bigger than your biggest lens's thread, just because if it's smaller, you can't do anything with it, but bigger, you can always use step-up rings. I have the six to nine version for shooting outside. That's the one you wanna go with. I also love that that thing comes with a defender that you can just pop into the case. All fits together nicely. I like that thing. I also like using the Polar Pro Defender to clip over the front of any lens that I don't have protection on and I need protection for whatever reason. When it comes to storing my memory cards, I use a Pelican waterproof memory card case. It stores a bunch of SD cards and micro SD cards. It's nice to know that they're all safe all in one spot. I previously used SanDisk memory cards and they're great. I would recommend them to anybody if you don't need incredibly fast speeds. There are faster ones out there, but they're a lot more expensive. I just changed to V90 Pro grade cards, which are incredibly fast. They're gonna be going really well with my Sony a7S III when it comes. Batteries, I like to use the official Sony batteries with the new firmware on the a7 III. It does let you know that you're not using a proper battery. Are you sure you wanna use this and you have to click OK? That being said, I also use RAV power batteries and I find them to work well and they have just as much juice as the a7 III's. Portable chargers, RAV Power is the brand that I trust. They're very well reviewed and I like that this one has USB-C power delivery. It's better, faster, smarter. It's a decent charger. I use an off-brand Sony a7 III camera grip. I don't use it that often, but when I need extra power and I don't wanna to have to take the batteries out and everything like that, I can put two of them in there. You don't need to buy the official Sony one. The third-party brands work just fine. Just make sure the one you buy is well-reviewed. In terms of a cage, I use the Small Rig Arca Swiss Half Cage. It's called a half cage because it only really covers half of the camera. This is really good for swapping between photo and video. So if I'm shooting video, I want the Ninja 5 attached, a mic attached, but then I need to quickly swap the photo and I don't wanna have that big rig with me, I can just pop it out. 
The plate on the bottom is still Arca Swiss. It goes onto a tripod, really easy, and you're good to go. One of the first things I do when I buy a camera body is buy an L bracket and then take off the side. So it's just the bottom part. I like the extra grip and the extra weight that it gives to the camera. I also really like that it's Arca Swiss for the most part, and it just clips into all the plates I already have. In terms of quick release plates, I've gone through a bunch. I've gone through the Manfrotto RC32 ones. I've gone through the bigger Arca, no Manfrotto style ones, and I always come back to Arca Swiss. That is my preference. You can buy cheap knockoff ones. They work just as well as the higher end ones. I think they're like $15 a plate with the mount included too. I also really enjoy using the Xeon quick release plates for things like the Ninja 5 for mics, things that you're quickly swapping between and you don't want to put a Arca Swiss plate on it. In terms of a drone, I use the DJI Mavic Air 2, just upgraded from the DJI Mavic Pro 1. I love the Air 2. It's smoother, it's quieter, it does 4K 60, it has 4K zoom. That drone is amazing. The controller on it is so much better. It feels nice in the hands. The joysticks can be removed. It has a built-in cable for your iPhone. That's the best controller that I've used on any drone period. When it comes to mics that I use, my favorite one right now is the Rode Video NTG. It has a built-in battery that's charged through USB-C. It can also be used as a voiceover mic and I often use it for that. Plug it in through your computer, USB-C. The 3.5 mil input now becomes a headphone output so you can listen to it as you're, or you can monitor your audio as you're recording. Fantastic mic for the price. In terms of a mic for on the go, if I don't wanna to have to worry about keeping it powered or worrying that it's charged, I use the Rode Video Micro, tiny little mic, great sound, great price. In terms of a mic for events, weddings, corporate gigs, that kind of thing, lapel mic too. Tascam DR10L with lapel mic that comes built in. It screws in so it can't come unplugged accidentally. That thing records at two different levels, so if your audio comes in really hot, you can just use the secondary file, which is lower. You don't have to worry about any peaking audio. Also, the battery life is incredible, and if your battery is gonna run out, it closes off the file before the battery runs out, so it's not just a corrupt file that you can't use. Tascam DR10L. In terms of wireless audio, I use the Rode Wireless Go. Never had a problem with it. Had had some issues with using a lapel mic, so now I use the Rode Wireless Go lapel mic and no hissing in the background, which is the audio issues that I was having. So that's what I'd say if you need a wireless audio solution. In terms of audio for recording events, Zoom H1, the original, battery life's incredible, 3.5 mil jack going in, can control the levels, can you can see the levels live on the screen, headphone output, it's cheap, reliable, Zoom H1. If you can get the original, get the original one. Pretty sure it's discontinued. When it comes to lights in the studio, the big one right here that's lighting me up, my key light is the Godox SL60W. It's a very affordable light. You can control it with a remote control. I have a big newer light dome on there with a light grid as well. My fill light, which is the one here you can't really see, it's not doing a ton, but it does enough. Also can be controlled with a remote. It's the Falcon Eyes P12. You can do different effects on it, that kind of thing. It's also V-mount compatible if you have a V-mount battery which I don't. Again, newer light dome on it. If you need a cheap light dome, the newer ones are fantastic. Great diffusion, you can get with a grid, without a grid. They come in different sizes. The newer ones are great. My hair light, which is the one over here, also remote controlled, is the Aperture Tri-8C, which is completely adjustable in terms of color temperature and brightness. Just a great little light to have off to the side there. Also, you can use the Sony NP batteries to power it. In terms of little lights that I like to use out and about or for just highlighting little things in the studio, I really like to use the P1 Blogger, completely adjustable color temperature, fully RGB, and has a really nice little adjustable mounting bracket on it too. And the battery life's actually pretty incredible. I also use the Aperture ALMW and the Aperture ALMX as little lights for lighting up things in the studio and for carrying about if I need some light at a wedding. Very reliable color and I trust them. One of my favorite lights is the one that's actually lighting me back here, the Yongnuo YN360. It's a light bar, Sony MP battery powered. You can plug it in if you want to. Bi color, fully RGB, great light for out and about and obviously for in the studio too. For lights at events, if I need a spotlight on someone, I use the Yongnuo YN216. They're cheap, they're powered with Sony MP batteries or power if you buy an adapter. They come with a set of barn doors. For an on the fly, easy to use, cheap light, they're a pretty solid solution. Battery life's pretty good too. There's so many different pieces of camera gear that have different sizes for Allen keys and flatheads and regular Phillips screwdrivers. So I use this little small rig tool and that thing's incredible. The only thing I'd say with it is it does get a little bit loose now and then, you have to tighten it back up. I also use a Leatherman that comes with me everywhere for if you need to cut anything or saw anything. Leatherman's a great thing to have with you. Favorite knife, because I get lots of boxes, is a Spyderco 
forgotten the name of it, but it's green. I like it. I've had to repair a few electronics recently, a gimbal specifically, a button on it, and I also had to repair something on my drone before. So I found having a good set of screwdrivers, the little Torx T, whatever they're called, and then a pad for organizing the screws, that kind of thing, it's magnetic, very useful. I'll pop links down below for you. When it comes to tripods, there's different ones I have for different uses. I use a Mi Photo Road Trip. I'm using it right now, Road Trip S. That's like my go-to for hikes or if I'm traveling. My like middle of the road tripod for using in the studio or from out and about too, even for photos as well, is a Benro carbon fiber with an IB2 bull head on it. And then when it comes to like a sturdy big tripod for a wedding or you need a locked off shot, that's, even if someone trips over it, it's not going anywhere. I use a zero, zero, zero video tripod. When it comes to tripods, one thing I will tell you is buy an expensive one once opposed to buying cheap ones 10 times. I've been there, believe me, the cheap ones will break. Just buy good ones, you'll thank me later. Monopods do not get enough praise. I use a monopod for events when you're in a situation where it's really tight, you don't have enough space to put tripod legs out. It's also much easier for moving around. And monopods do come with legs as well, so they will actually balance on their own. I don't recommend just leaving the camera, but if you need to just let go for a second, it will work just fine. You can also get ones like the one I have that comes with a solid video head. C-stands are one of those things that cost a lot of money, but you really appreciate it once you've got it. Mounted a bunch of stuff above right here, you can't even tell. C-stands completely adjustable in height. They carry a lot of weight above one arm as well. You need to do a top-down angle. Pretty much anything you want to mount to it, you can. I would recommend a sandbag as well. When it comes to C-stands, the newer brand ones are fantastic. They're cheaper, they work great, they come with everything you need. And as I said, sandbags, Amazon Basics work just fine. When it comes to light stands, there are two different kinds that I use. There's lighter duty ones, which will not expand at the base so much, and there's also heavier duty ones. The newer ones work just fine, even for the heavy duty ones. You want one where the base expands a long way, that way it's a lot harder to tip over. Again, would recommend sandbags. When it comes to backdrops, the one that I use for the studio, I have another one that I use for corporate stuff too. It's the Mount Dog 3 meter by 3 meter. It's pretty heavy duty, works great. If you need it to go three meters wide and three meters high, you can do so. The reason I like it, it's a lot cheaper than all the other options out there. It's very well reviewed. I like it. When it comes to the backdrop paper that I use, this is a dark gray made by a company called Savage. It's really expensive to get this stuff shipped because it's nearly three meters wide. I think it's 107 inches. So if you have a store you can go pick it up from, I'd recommend doing that. Friction arms and magic arms are things that you can mount things to other things. Microphones, BTS cameras, monitors, I only ever use the small rig ones. I've tried other brands and I find they just get loose after a while. So stick to the small rig ones. I do use a teleprompter. I've used a bigger one. I returned it. I did not like it. The one I ended up going with is the Parrot one. It just uses your phone. It has a Bluetooth remote, which is a bit finicky to connect. But overall, for what I need it to do, it works pretty well. Ninja 5 is the go-to monitor recorder for a million reasons. I'll link the other video right here as to why I love that. I also use a Portkeys P5, which is a fantastic little monitor, very slim, next to no bezels, great for a top-down angle if I'm already using the Ninja 5. I use the Hollyland Mars 400S, which is a wireless video solution. Basically, anything that has an HDMI signal, you can send it wirelessly, and it goes a long way. I did a video covering this, and I trust it. For HDMI cables, I use these curly, bendy ones. I can't seem to find them on Amazon. I buy them in bulk from eBay, I buy like four or five at a time. They take six weeks to arrive, but they're reliable, and I like that they are. Coiled, that's the word, not curly. If I'm shooting a wedding or event, sometimes I'll need a satchel bag. I hate how they look, but I use the Tenba DNA 15. I can store two bodies, like two or three lenses in it, and the drone cleaning kit, audio kit, basically everything I need just on my side, ready to go. Sometimes you need a satchel, that's the one I use. It also has silent Velcro, so that's pretty cool if you need to use it. You're in a church, doesn't make a noise. Backpacks, I've tried multiple different ones. I always come back to the same one, the Low Pro Pro Tactic 450AW version one. There's another version out now. I've still got version one, I've had it for three years. It still looks nearly new. That thing's incredible, holds a ton of stuff. I put it through its paces. It's traveled tons of places with me and uh, I love it. If you start shooting corporate events, gigs, weddings, you're gonna have to carry a ton of stuff with you. I found these bags from Nua. They fit light stands in them, they fit monopods in them, they fit tripods in them, they're cheap, they're on wheels, they're great, I have two of them. One of them broke, the bit that makes it stand upright, but it never stands upright anyway, so they're good, I like them. They replaced one for free because it broke, so. Nua has great stuff. I use Peak Design anchors on a lot of my cameras, not really for straps or for anything like that, just the actual mount itself, just to hang from a camera bag or something like that. 
those are pretty good. When it comes to gimbals, I need something that will carry a lot of weight that I can trust and is just reliable. So I trust the Ronin S. If I need something smaller, I use the Feutech AK200S. When it comes to BTS, I like to use the Insta360 cameras. The 1R and the 1X work great. You can just point them at any angle. You know it's 360, you can reframe it after the fact. They're great for capturing POV BTS. I do like to use the Insta360 selfie sticks and the longer stick as well because they do some form of wizardry and it just disappears. If I need a smaller discrete option or just for capturing family stuff, Insta 360 Go, I like those too. When it comes to computers, I use a 2019 iMac refurbished. Always buy Apple computers refurbished, you'll save a ton of money. There's a website you can go to to monitor stock levels of specific specs if you want one. You can set up alerts for it. Buy refurbished, this is the spec that I use. If I need to edit video on the go, I do have a 2015 MacBook Pro. It's a little bit older now, it's feeling the pain of editing with video 4K, but it still works when I need to in a pinch. In terms of editing software, for the past 18 months or so, I have used Final Cut. Previously, I used Premiere Pro. I still have to use it now and then. I don't like how often it crashes. For editing drives, I use Samsung SSDs, the T5 or T7 drives, I believe they are. I have a 500 one, a 250 one, and recently a one terabyte one. A7S3 is coming. Everything is backed up to a C2 big 16 terabyte RAID drive. So it's two eight gigabyte drives that simultaneously copy to each other. So if one goes down, I just replace it. It copies everything back to it. For editing photos on the fly and for typing all of the content up for my videos, I use the iPad Pro 11 inch 2018 model, more recently with the Apple Magic Keyboard. That thing is the best thing I've bought like all year. It's incredible. It basically turns your iPad into what feels like a mini MacBook. For a phone, I use an iPhone 11 Pro Max, 256 gigabyte in green. I like everything green recently. That being said, next time I will need to get the 512, 256 is quickly not becoming enough space. I use that for my social stuff, Twitter, Instagram, for Instagram stories, filming content on the go, lots of photos, editing photos on the go. Phone is incredibly useful and I went with a Max because I like the battery life of it. I can get through a whole day, no issues, and still have 20% at the end of the day after being on it all day. Headphones, I use the AirPods Pro. I love the noise cancellation on those things. It's like, ding, silence, amazing. And then for headphones, when it comes to editing, I use the Sony MDR10 RB. I think they're Bluetooth, they're older, had them a few years, they still work great. A couple of other things I use around the studio that are really useful, these bendy things, don't know what they're called, great for holding the Ronin S together because there's no locks, great for cable management, pretty much anything you use a cable tie for that you want to be able to reuse without having to cut the cable tie. Gaff tape for everything, duct tape for everything, color duct tape for everything that you need to write on, small duct tape for when big duct tape is too big, packing tape because I send a lot of boxes. Cleaning kit and cleaning swabs. If you have a mirrorless camera, your sensor is gonna get dirty and you're gonna have to clean it with a sensor swab. Make sure you use a proper sterilized swab with a proper solution. And you're gonna need a blower and a lens cleaning cloth and one of the brush things too. They will all be things you don't wanna buy, but you need. One of my favorite things in the studio that you don't actually see is my Husky workbench for organizing all of my gear. Everything has its own drawer. I actually have a Ikea black headboard on top of it for when I want like a black work surface or I can take it off and just have a traditional wood surface. That thing's on wheels so I can have it as a standing shot, have it as my bench, or when I wanna sit down like this, I can just roll it out and it's good to go. Husky workbench. I'm gonna regret saying this, but all the links are below. That's gonna take me three weeks to build that link catalog. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Alexa, turn off studio. Okay.